Welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. So, this one is taken directly from the Observer, but we're going to discuss more to this. You know how we do a thing already. Now, when a Spanish town gang wanted to kill Weekly's son, this right here is going to probably tell a couple of people exactly which gang this is that's not what I want to discuss though I want to discuss something else that is pertaining to this the firstborn of former energy minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley and he is the former energy minister there's a reason why he became former and we're gonna talk about that a little bit now the former energy minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley was marked for death his son was marked for death by a certain infamous gang which still operates in the Spanish town area of St. Catherine. At a time when his father was trying to clean up the former Jamaica capital in his role as mayor and chairman of the then St. Catherine Public or Parish Council, now St. Catherine Municipal Corporation. First when I saw this thing I said to myself, if they have solid proof that this actually happened, Energy Minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley's son was on the wish list to get knocked off. And they are so sure that they are able to say that this gang still operates in that same St. Catherine area. Shouldn't they have more information connecting? And shouldn't they be making some arrests? And shouldn't we see some court trials going on? Because when you read the news enough people, you have to take the sense out the nonsense. Now, that was one of the defining moments Dr. Wheatley's, of Dr. Wheatley's life. I am not saying it didn't happen. I am just looking at the story from two different angles. Many people are questioning the timing of this story how come we never hear about this before how come is now that him dr wheatley is in trouble or wants his spot or position back that this is coming about is this to garner sympathy for dr wheatley did this really happen listen to it good so that was one of the defining moments of dr wheatley's life as he had to institute tactics to prevent the unthinkable from happening in 2008 remember you know it was discovered that his son is who they wanted why let's find out so he said that when i was mayor i did some serious work in terms of locking down some illegal bus parks at railway in spanish town stated Dr. Wheatley in an exclusive interview with the Jamaica Observer last week. Now, Spanish Town, Bus Park, that name there, fill the blank in for yourself. You will recall that we had to lock down the transportation center and run everybody off the road with their illegal parking. So I remember I was overseas at one time and I got a call from the head of the St. Catherine North Police, Superintendent Anthony Castell, that they got some information that this particular gang wanted to kill my son. The information ran in a circle. A guy who was a member of the gang was part of the discussion to kill my son at St. Jago High School. He was in the fifth form at the time. The gang members told his cousin, who was actually a member of the rival gang at the time, and that rival gang member told the police. So when the police check the underground intelligence now, they realize that it was actually true, and that plans were being made to kill my son, Dr. Wheatley confirmed to the Sunday Observer. Now, immediately, arrangements had to be made to protect the young man he graduated recently from the United States from an institution as an executive chef. Now, before y'all go saying stuff like Dr. Wheatley, Minister of Energy and all these things, and your son a chef, a cook in a kitchen, 
I want y'all to understand that executive chefs make a whole lot of money. There are some out here making hundreds of thousands of dollars per year and some have gone on to create platforms that they are able to make millions and millions of dollars from and I'm talking US dollars, okay? Now, the threat level was so high that it resulted in the lad having to be taken to and from school daily for the rest of the school term. The last one was before graduation. The security person was also assigned to stay with the youth in school during school whole day at St. Jago. He didn't even graduate high school. As he finished his CXC, which is the common exam, um, the common, the Caribbean examinations council, I sent him to stay with a friend of mine in the United States, a KC or Kingston College man, Dr. Weekly revealed. Dr. Weekly also said that my son did not even know what the situation was, although he was worried and he was wondering why the police were picking him up every day. It affected me. I was very fearful for my child. I also had to have my CPO, which is close protection officer, because of the nature of the work and the areas that I represented. Because there was always violence in Spanish town. But we have been able to move past that, he said. We were only trying to bring law and order into Spanish town, but it caused some amount of anxiety, Weekly said. People, this is July 13th, 2020. I'm recording this video. Did they bring law and order to Spanish Town? I mean, go look up what I want. Did they bring law and order to Spanish Town? Now, what happened next unsettled the Wheatley family, but conscious coordination prevented anything from happening. People would not understand what we went through, you know, Dr. Wheatley said. My son returned to Jamaica only once after that. And he still doesn't know the full extent of what happened. Well, he's about to find out now. Few people knew about it. I took him from his mother when he was three years old. My mother was very worried because at the time it was her that she, he was living with. And she was very nervous because my mother is a Christian woman. And to see police cars and undercover cars keep on coming to her house, it made her very nervous. That was one of the most terrifying times and experiences in my life. That one reached home because in my, it was my child, it was my first born. The system forced me to have to send him away because they said that the mayor was going on too bad in Spanish town and they had to quiet me, said the member of parliament for St. Catherine South Central in case you are wondering who he is. Now, there are a couple of comments here that I find very interesting that I think I need to share with you, all right? Truth said, the price you pay for public service in this country is too high. It's not worth it. From character assassination to physical harm that may come to your family. And I've said this before, people say, so Flo, why don't you go back to Jamaica and run for office and do something from a political perspective? And I said, I have children to raise and I know for a fact that I am their breadwinner and if anything happens to me, not one of you who are encouraging me to go do that would actually help my children through their struggles to grow without a father. So in other words then, may I save myself and my family, may not do that. It's dangerous, okay? Or you have to be connected in some type of way where you are feared respected on that level or can afford high levels of security. Now, Master Sergeant says, I am at loss as to what this writer is trying to do here. Is he trying to bolster Dr. Wheatley's chance of returning to his ministerial job? It's not going to work. Vision of New York responded and said, look like he's trying to distract the public from his own behavior. Come on, let out this sympathy story. Winston Watson says there is definitely a challenging experience, but the timing of this release is very questionable. Is it to elicit compassionate feelings for Mr. Wheatley? Two wrongs don't never equal a right, sir. Scandinavia says, 
Thanks for the article, Mr. Wheatley. I read it with keen interest and you did what you were supposed to do and that is to protect your son. Very good indeed. I would have done the same. Now, you are a privileged person and you can still do things despite what is going on and my thoughts focus on the hundreds of people that were killed over the years including babies and children make that 11,000 in the past 10 years 11,000 in the past 10 years and it is still happening to this day poor people and poor people's children who could not afford to do what you have done to protect your son so good governance has failed us the Jamaican poor people because government is elected to lead and a government that has failed to protect its citizens is a failed state the Jamaica we are experiencing today was created after the so-called independence by both political parties PNP and JLP the island that was once a safe country to live and raise a family in is now the killing capital of the world and it is heading to be most corrupted country in the world for its size and population now Melchizedek grandson replied or said the killers live and hang out amongst poor people so it's poor people's problem if the poor people work with the police to run away the killers then the killer would have no choice but to stop their dirty ways or suffer the consequences the government and the rich man can only do so much to help poor people initially innocent lives will be lost when standing up against the badness of killers but eventually goodness will prevail and it will be worth it for the future generations if we allow the badness culture to continue then the poor people who are most vulnerable or responsible for it will continue to suffer the most of it under colonial rule the oppressors never allowed badness from the poor people so the poor people were actually safer under colonial rule unfortunately the oppressors hardly allowed much goodness either now under black rule badness from the uh, who tell you so we under black, black rule papa eh under black rule now these are comments i am reading you know under black rule he says badness from the poor people is encouraged and badness is praised when it happens now and again if only badness could be oppressed and goodness encouraged then jamaica would be nice in reality though there are too many people who benefit from badness now to allow goodness to take over without putting up a vicious fight so if the people of Jamaica are willing to go to war with these people and win such a war then Jamaica would be nice I don't buy that one bit okay I don't buy that one bit I've said this before I find myself saying this pretty often but when the people are afraid of the people that have been got elected to govern them when the people are afraid of their local law enforcement officials because they don't trust them or because they think that they are corrupted or they might bring their names back and say I'm a snitch you and get them killed and their family members killed then the people have no choice but to be quiet you talk about sacrificing lives for future generation for the good fighting this evil how many of us are willing to put your life on the line and to die and leave behind one two three four five or how many kids you have to be raised by whoever raises them because you're no longer here whoever provides for them because you're no longer here how many people are willing to make that kind of a sacrifice and then even if we make that kind of a sacrifice who's to say that it will be worth it only the future can tell that if this corruption continues at a higher level then the people on the lower level have no chance of eradicating corruption 
they are just pawns in the game and as they move out others will gladly move in to take up that space and these from the upper who are sending down these orders and orchestrating these things because let's face it no regular normal Jamaican don't have no gun factory in Jamaica don't have control of our wharfs and our airport um, spaces no regular poor people as them call it then controls none of that so obviously it is someone in a position of authority that is the handle in all the facilitator in all of this it's just sadly that poor people are used as pawns and instead of giving a youth a computer a laptop and paying for some internet to be at his house so he can actually start a business online and end up feeding his family and himself you give him a gun and tell him who figure kill or you give him a gun because in say Maga Masha works and you're taking a percentage and taking your gun back so you can get the same gun to another ghetto youth that's the reality right the whole Dr. Wheatley thing though I'm not here to say if his story is lie or true, but I find interesting how VX Truth said this. And we're going to close this video with this comment right here. I wonder how many average Joe wish that they could protect their families like this. Talk up the man. How many waited for the police to protect their loved ones but instead ended up grieving? Funeral. Burial. My son did not even know about the situation although he was worried and was wondering why the police were picking him up every day. It affected me. I was very fearful for my child. I always had to have my CPO, close protection officer, because of the nature of the work and the areas that I represented because there was always violence in Spanish town or volatility. But we have been able to move past that. We were only trying to bring law and order into Spanish town, but it caused some amount of anxiety. Here is a politician showing the average Joe what donkey said. The world, no level. The average politician makes it hard to own a weapon for self-protection in Jamaica. Supported by wagonists who themselves are willing to let the idea develop to be that an unfounded police force that is only corrupt in many of its quarters is the best that there is to offer. And do not forget, government love the poor. Only foolish people support a group of individuals above themselves who give themselves a better quality of life than they are willing to fight for for you while at the same time denying that same quality to those that are not in their group. Jamaica is a real animal farm I tell you. Hmm. Shaking my head. Very well put. I could not have said it any better. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one. Do you know about Dr. Wheatley's whole situation? Do you know what his whole situation entails? Do you think the timing of this story is off? Like they're trying to garner sympathy and support for him. Do you think that Jamaica is a failed state? Because the government has failed to protect its citizens by large. And that is the reason why so many are unwilling to say with them no. And also, a look, turn a blind eye, or get involved in criminal activities because they'll benefit from the spoils. Talk up, my man. Let's have a real discussion in the comment section below. It's SoFlow TV. I'm out. Don't forget, like, comment, share. Subscribe. Peace.